Hi everyone, welcome to Not Defining. Today, we're talking about how to deal with queer phobic families. Thank you for tuning in. It's Mark here from Not Defining and we are talking about how to deal with those bigoted queerphobic families. As always, if you like what you hear, please hit subscribe. I would love if you shared my videos and write in the comments if you'd like some personalized support. I will always respond to you and I'm always here. How many of you have been in that situation where Maybe you go home for Christmas, or maybe you haven't even left home yet. Maybe you're with your relatives, or maybe it's not a family, it's another kind of group. But either way, you get those queer phobic comments. You get people who really don't understand or they don't accept LGBT people. How do we deal with this? Because, you know, we love these people often. You know, we don't want to cause friction and everything. And, Sometimes the comments are cloaked in kind of passive aggressive or oh no, I didn't say that. Oh no, I, I accept everything and it's just that this and just that. You know, it can be very, very subtle. So how do we deal with this and reduce the level of anxiety that we have to experience? So here's what I've learned. There is a difference between convincing and influencing okay convincing somebody is trying to change what they think and this is pretty pretty difficult um, because most of the time people think what they think and naturally as humans we don't tend to respond well to people telling us what to think or telling us what to do it just doesn't work like that. Particularly when it is kind of moral opinions, maybe religious opinions, maybe political opinions, things which are kind of important to us. Um, people don't really like to be told. So that's why the first thing we often try and do is convince. Yeah, if someone has a queer phobic view, we'll say, oh no, but actually, you know, that's wrong because X, Y, Z. And they'll go, blah, 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 and they'll come up with all different kinds of excuses and you will feel really annoyed. You'll get really frustrated. You might have an argument even. Um, and it just becomes really horrible. You are trying to convince that person. And what you are saying to that person ultimately is, your opinion has affected me. Something about what you've said has got to me. And I need you to have an opinion of me or opinion of the LGBT community. Otherwise, I'm going to be upset. I'm going to be hurt. I'm going to be impacted somehow. Try to avoid that. You can try it a little bit at the beginning. You know, if someone's kind of ignorant, you're like, well, no, you know, you can tell them some facts and, and that's fine. But if they're really, really not responding, stop trying to convince them. Move from convincing to influencing. Okay? Convincing to influencing. What is the difference? Influencing means that you have a view or even you are something because you know many of us are LGBT and you are proud, you are confident, you are happy with yourself, you love yourself, say it once openly, with a smile on your face, and then 
you live it. And what this does is it says to the other person, what you're saying can't hurt me. What you're saying doesn't mean anything to me. I am so confident and so happy in who I am and what I feel. You're entitled to your view. No worries. It's just, I don't agree, not for me. And what will often happen is that that person will feel a little bit silly. Because when you are truly confident, that speaks power. That speaks louder than words. People who try and convince other people and control what they're thinking, sometimes they're not quite confident in what they're really thinking. Um, if you think about anyone who you've been influenced by or impacted by, or inspired by, um, it's normally because they've done something or they've been something, right? So you look at, I don't know, uh, Nelson Mandela, for example. He didn't just sit there telling people about equality. No, he led a movement against apartheid. He did something and he is renowned across the world for having influenced and impacted millions of people, right? If you look at, at your favorite sports star or pop star, they haven't just sat in a room and told people that they should go out and play sport. Why are you going to listen to some random person telling you that you should go out and play sport or telling you you should go and uh, sing? No. They went out and they played sport and they made music. And you are inspired by them because you're wow, look what they've done. Look what they've done. Look at who they are. They're out there. They don't care what anyone thinks of them. But everyone looks up to them because they're fantastic. And there'll be some people who don't like them. And there'll be a lot of people who do. It doesn't matter. You are owning your own life and you are influencing people by who you are. So particularly with the issue of LGBT, where it is something that you simply are, um, it's not really that important to discuss the issues around it. I mean, you can, like I said, you can do it a little bit, but if someone's really morally against it, just be your existence is a revolution. And there's nothing that homophobic people hate more than to see happy LGBT people living their lives and not caring about any of their BS. So, why is this so difficult to do? Well, it's difficult to do because ultimately we have to accept that that person may or may not reject us. A lot of the time when it's people we love, parents, family members, friends, we try and change their mind because we want them to love us. We want them to accept us. We need them to accept us. We're terrified that they're not going to. And actually influencing, just sitting in your power, being who you are, can be terrifying because you're giving power to that person to walk away. And this is so difficult, it can be heartbreaking, but we must address and confront that fear if we are going to live in peace. So, stay away from convincing, influence through who you are in confidence, in wholeness, and in peacefulness. Tell me what you think in the comments. Do you have any other tips? Has anyone experienced this before? I always wanna know. And please hit subscribe so that you never miss one of our videos. Thanks so much for listening and bye for now.